Good morning, everybody, and welcome. My name is Ray Andrewson. I'm the executive director of the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, uh, serving the communities of Wallingford and North Haven. Uh, welcome to our North Haven Candidates Forum for this election year 2021, presented by the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce and our Government Affairs Committee. I want to welcome you as in the next hour, we'll be presenting questions to both the candidates uh, for first selectment for the town of North Haven. Uh, and these questions that we'll be asking will also be available to you uh, in the coming uh, days and weeks as North Haven Television will be uh, taking this recording and rebroadcasting it on their service for you to see once again. Before we introduce our two candidates uh, for first selectmen this morning and begin our program, just a couple of ground rules to share with you uh, this morning. This is a 60 minute uh, candidates forum. Um, so we will be using all of the time to fill with our question and answer period. Uh, there will also, and has been a coin flip to determine who will be starting uh, our program here today. And I'll explain in just a moment who will be going first um, in the order uh, that we present. Each of the candidates will have two minutes for opening and closing statements of this morning. They will also have um, two minutes for wrap up statements and closing statements at the end of this forum. Candidate A who uh, wins the flip uh, will have two minutes um, uh, at election to answer the question. Candidate B will then have two minutes uh, to answer the same question. And then 30 second follow-up responses from both candidate A and candidate B will be offered. And candidates have the option to use this time uh, using the additional time or deferring the question. Uh, and after the first question is asked, the order of the candidate answering the question will be reversed. Uh, the Quinnipiac Chamber representative will be holding up time cards uh, following the intervals at one minute. You'll see that uh, on the screen. Uh, also at 30 seconds and 10 seconds to notify our um, candidates who are on this Zoom presentation and recording of uh, when their time will be up. And uh, after each candidate completes the closing statements, we will then thank you all for coming here and that will be it. So I'd like, uh, before we get into the meat of the questions and begin this morning um, with our opening statements, I'd like to introduce the two candidates first, uh, the incumbent for selectman, uh, Republican from the town of North Haven, uh, Michael Frieda. Mike Frieda is serving a sixth term as the chief elected official in the town of North Haven. Uh, he has been, uh, prior to that, a past member of the North Haven Board of Finance, third selectman as well for two years. And before that, a, a extensive career in business, president and CEO of some of multi-million dollar corporations. Uh, he's a past president of the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities, also is chair of the executive board of the South Central Regional Council of Government, vice chair of the Workforce Alliance Executive Board and sits on the board of directors of the Connecticut Council of Small Towns. Uh, Democratic challenger Carl Kordek is from two business areas in his experience, both tourism and security. He's been a manager in tourism in his career, director in security. Uh, he is a graduate of Dizzy University, has two degrees from Charter Oak State College, and has blended them for his campaign to become first selectman in North Haven as a challenger. So we do have uh, opening statements, and uh, by uh, virtue of our coin toss uh, earlier, uh, first selectman Mike Frieda will begin with his two minutes. Thank you very much, Ray. It's a great pleasure to be here with the Chamber of Commerce, and a great pleasure to be here to talk about some of the issues here in North Haven. So it's been a, my great pleasure for the past 12 years to be serving the great citizens of North Haven. We've accomplished a lot together. I will start by saying that Ray summarized some of my business experience, and that has helped me tremendously. The job of a first selectman in any community, particularly here in North Haven, is a very complex position. It's complicated and requires a great deal of expertise in many different areas operational management, strategic management, financial management, customer service management, and bringing in new businesses. Over the course of the past 12 years, we have had many successes together. And those successes include balancing budgets every year, having six out of the last 10 years with no tax increases, and two of the last six years with no rate reductions. We have had unprecedented success in grand list growth. Two years ago, we led the state with grand list growth over 9%. And that's a result of my initiatives directly involved with every economic development project in town. 
We brought in hundreds of new businesses here. We created thousands and thousands of new jobs. Amazon as an example. Three years ago, Amazon came in. They are now have created 5,500 jobs here in North Haven and are the largest taxpayer here in town. As we move forward, we're still faced with challenges. These are very difficult times, but I'm very confident in my ability as North Haven's chief elected official to manage through complexity, to continue to bring new businesses in and continue to reinvest back in our great community. And we'll get into that a little bit later in terms of some of the things we've done from infrastructure improvements. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Carl Kordak. I'm running for first selectman. It's great to be here. I would like to thank the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce for holding this event and allowing us to speak freely about what North Haven needs today, tomorrow, and into the future. Our town is rich with such a great community of residents and local businesses, additionally, large-scale industries. North Haven has so much growth potential within its grasp. I'm running for first selectman. I'm here to tell you today, all those watching or listening, that we can be still having more done in this town. We have survived this turbulent economic time of COVID with the strength anyone would be proud of. Now is the time to rebuild something bigger and better than what here was here before. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I will tell you, it's much better when you don't mute yourself when you're trying to introduce someone. So. I'll recall doing that uh, for the next hour. So let's get to our first question uh, with our two candidates uh, here on this uh, forum. And uh, this goes to first life and Mike Frieda, the first question for two minute uh, response and regarding uh, economic development. When you give the importance of economic development and growth in the region, um, and, and, and as we've seen in the region, how would you compare and assess North Haven's success in this area and ensure the town is on track compared to the rest of the region? Two minutes. That's a great question, Ray. We have had a great deal of success here, and I know other communities have had some success also. We do it a little bit differently here. The chief elected official, myself, is directly involved with every project, and that is something that I don't delegate. Our grand list growth down through the years has been higher than many municipalities in the area. We focus in on bringing in large businesses, small businesses, and mid-sized businesses. You look at areas in the town, Washington Avenue, State Street, Universal Drive as key components to our economic development strategy. I've been very fortunate that in the last several years, I've been selected to be the top chief elected official in the state of Connecticut in terms of economic growth, economic development, not only in North Haven, but creating new businesses here that have benefited the region. What we see in North Haven, when we create a new business, we bring in people from other communities. We have businesses here that we have many people from outside of North Haven coming into North Haven to work. And that is why I've been recognized as a regional leader in economic development. Thank you. Mr. Kordak, you have two minutes. The main economic policy I'm focused on is moving North Haven into the next decade with the preservation of our current town services offered to residents emphasizing the need to keep all of our departments fully funded and staffed. To achieve this, we will be opening up a new area unexplored in North Haven, that is tourism. There is a value in our town's geographic location, as Mr. Frieda pointed out. We are perfectly nestled between I-91 and the Merritt Parkway. From these new tourist-based businesses coming in, we could revitalize declining regions of North Haven and grow into a unique destination with businesses for everyone to visit and thrive in all year round. I agree with Mr. Frieda. We need more outside visitors coming in to generate business for our local town. And in addition, I hope to expand the grand list with these moving forward. Thank you. So Mike Frieda, you have 30 seconds uh, if you'd like to follow up. Yes, I see no areas in North Haven where we're falling behind. We're growing and thriving in many, many areas and bringing in new businesses in all the areas that I mentioned. Uh, Mr. Kordick mentioned about preservation of services. Well, I'm not preserving services, I'm adding to services. I've added to services level here year after year after year and increased the service level by reducing taxes, controlling the mill rate and bringing in new businesses in various sectors. Thank you. Great. And if you choose, you have 30 seconds to uh, Mr. Corday. As a resident of North Haven, all I can say is this. Universal Drive is beautiful. State Street is getting there. The only blight we have right now is north side of Washington Ave. 
We have businesses that have been there for almost a decade unoccupied. I think with Quinnipiac nearby, we can definitely generate some additional businesses by filling those land spots and actually bring in new businesses that can generate some revenue to the grant list. I agree we've done well. From a budgetary perspective, we've done really well, but we can do a lot more. Thank you. So now this question will go to Carl Kordek. Um, it will have two minutes and, and it relates to COVID-19, certainly on the minds of everybody in the last uh, year and a half in any business community, in any community, and how they've been affected, not just in terms of health, but in terms of how the business community has been impacted uh, by the pandemic. So they face challenges, and we've heard this at the Chamber of Commerce so frequently, um, restaurants, small retail, for example. And now we're moving forward, and we have been this year with reopening and some ribbon cuttings for new businesses as well. How will you work to support those businesses and help them rebuild after a period of COVID? And this question goes to you, Mr. Kordek. Well, first and foremost, from my tourism experience, I would definitely say to people coming in, I would say it's safe, it's secure, and it's local. Those are the three words I would associate with North Haven. Because a lot of people, like you said, have a hesitancy to either shop in person, most people shop online, and we need to get them back into the local businesses. And being that partner with the local level, I, I understand Mr. Frieda is really good at that. Um, but hopefully I can step up and take up that mantle and carry that torch to the next conclusion of bringing in the additional businesses and helping them thrive beyond COVID and let them know this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Thank you. As Great. first selectman, and you've been first selectman uh, now for some time, if you look at what happened with this pandemic, it was a new challenge as well. What's your response? Well, this pandemic created a different paradigm for us in local and municipal government on a variety of different levels. As it relates to businesses, we work very closely with many, many businesses here in North Haven. But I took it down to a deeper level. I worked with property landlord owners who were leasing businesses or leasing space to various businesses. And we encouraged them to look to help reduce the rent, to work with their tenants to make sure that businesses were at least having a chance here to survive during the pandemic. And I'm proud to say that many of these property owners work very closely with their tenants, with us encouraging them to do so, to ensure that if the rent couldn't be paid for one month, that there were accommodations made. We work closely with businesses in terms of um, not issuing mandates, which businesses appreciated, and businesses all over the town called me for advice, encouragement, and that's what we did. We spent a lot of time working with our businesses to help them navigate through these difficult times. We also took it two or three steps further. In my role as vice chairman of Workforce Alliance, we were identifying sectors that were struggling, hospitality, restaurants as an example. We were looking to help replace positions by encouraging people who were out of work to take positions. We drilled down to a level that was unprecedented because of the difficult times we were in. And we continue to do that even as we ease out of this pandemic. There are still challenges for businesses, but even my collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce, I think has helped many businesses here in, in North Haven. Thank you. Mr. Kordek, you have 30 seconds. Uh, and this is on COVID-19 relief. The only question I would have is, did it, the no mask mandate impact senior shopping patterns in local businesses. I think it impacted them a little bit at the beginning of COVID. Thank you. Okay. 30 seconds for Mike Frieda. Uh, I don't see it that way. I think that what happened was that, yes, there's always a disparity between opinions in terms of mask mandates at businesses or not having them. But my relationship with the businesses down through the years has given me a trust factor with the businesses that they know their customers, they know their customers and clients very, very well. Many businesses have chosen to have masks, some have it. I trust the businesses in their judgment. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, this goes to first selectman Mike Frieda, um, and we'll have two minutes to um, respond. And it's on the issue of transparency, on transparency in government and keeping local businesses informed in decision-making processes, whether it goes related to um, planning and zoning issues, whether it goes to um, construction plans, working with developers, out-of-town businesses or local businesses establishing 
uh, footprint in the community. How do you plan to keep businesses involved in the decision-making process? You have two minutes. Well, I spend a lot of time meeting with businesses and talking to businesses. Uh, twice a year prior to the pandemic, or at least once a year, we were doing our State of the Union address for businesses. We're, from a transparency standpoint, I would deliver PowerPoint presentations. I would take the business community through visual tours of the town, property by property and location by location in terms of what we're doing. Many times, and I still continue to do this, I will drive prospective businesses all around town. Love Lira Bakery is a good example of a small business. Carol Asprelli, a wonderful woman. She was looking at various communities uh, in town. I think from what I was told, I was the only mayor of first selectman that took the time not only to call her, but to personally drive her around town and show her 17 different locations. And now she's driving there across the street from Big Y. Whether it's big businesses, small businesses, or large businesses, I am with them. I spend time with them. I help them. Additionally, yesterday was a good example. I had a commercial real estate developer call me from Massachusetts said, Mr. Frieda, we're hearing all about you in North Haven on economic development, and we'd like to come and meet with you. I offered to drive them around town because they want to bring a retail mall plaza here in town. So my transparency with businesses is a daily thing, and it involves speaking with them, talking with them, offering them advice, and driving them around town to show them different locations. Thank you. And the issue is transparency. Um, how do you plan to keep businesses involved in the decision-making process? Carl Kordek, you have two minutes. I think there's a lot of little things that can be improved. Obviously, the government's done a great job with economic development over the past decade. Um, the first one I would suggest is probably fixing the EDC website, making it more updated for 21st century. Because if you go to the EDC website, it looks like it's from the 1990s, you know, <laughs> Windows 95 style. Um, beyond that, I would fix the social media presence. Um, personal touches are good, but at the end of the day, like you're saying, there's global businesses that want to come here. Or there's companies outside of the state that want to see what we have to offer and they can't see it through social media. And that's one of the greatest tools we have today in the 21st century. Um, secondary to that, I would think we should improve at least a little bit the uh, transparency amount that's going on with the EDC minutes, the meeting minutes. Um, Sometimes the meetings minutes are very brief and short. I think we mean, need more, a little bit more description of what's going on in town as, as opposed to everything is good or everything's great or this project's been delayed or that project's been delayed. I think the residents would appreciate having more information available to them, especially in the information age. Thank you. And Mike, pretty have 30 seconds uh, follow up. Well, with respect to the EDC, uh, we have an Economic Development Commission, but as everyone knows on that Economic Development Commission, and I say this with all due respect because they would agree that Mike Fried is the Economic Development Commission. So at those meetings, I will give uh, lengthy overviews in terms of what's happening. But I also utilize the print and media to tell the public what we're doing. My columns in the back of North Haven Magazine are clearly um, illustrating exactly what's happening in town. I have public meetings. I talk about it at Board of Selectmen meetings. I think we've been very transparent. Thank you. And if you choose, uh, 30 seconds. I would just say that print media is good, but at the end of the day, we need multiple communication channels open for residents. Thank you. Okay. Next question goes to Carl Kordek, uh, and it's on the issue of uh, regulatory reform and uh, how to make uh, the process of starting or establishing a business um, uh, perhaps easier in town. So there are Admittedly, hurdles to overcome for any business. Um, there's a permitting process, licensing, uh, depending upon the particular business. Um, how would you use your position, uh, Carl Kordek, as first selectman if elected to make the process easier for new business in North Haven? Well, it goes back to what I previously stated. I believe that the EDC website should have remote links available to businesses that want to get the permitting process started early. Um, I think a lot of businesses and developers would agree that you have to get started right away if they want to make some revenue. And 
get the year started. So I think from that perspective, you should be able to expedite the process. Additionally, I would work with the departments in town to see what else we could do to expedite that process, especially with the Planning and Zoning Commission. I know we've had some uh, projects that have been either delayed or hindrance because the R40 lot issue and the affordable housing issue. Um, as that extends, obviously, into the next decade, we're going to be seeing more of those conflicts arise where residents don't necessarily want businesses abutting their houses, and I understand that completely. So thank you. All right, Freddie, you have two minutes. So let me explain what we do with businesses in terms of simplifying the regulatory processes and sometimes simplifying in government the bureaucratic processes. It has nothing to do with the EDC website. It has everything to do, and I'll use Amazon as an example. When we brought Amazon here to North Haven and they sat in my conference room and there were eight executives from Amazon from all over the United States in that meeting. The first question they asked me was, Mr. Frieda, what's your background? When I told them I had the business background I had, they were very impressed with that. The second question they asked me was the stability of the municipality in terms of your financial management. They don't like wide vicissitudes and mill rate reductions. But what I did for them and what I do with many businesses is I give them what we call one-stop meeting shopping. I simplify the process by having them in with the building department, the land use director, the police chief, the fire chief. So when they leave that meeting, we have a plan in terms of how they're going to move forward. We do this with many businesses. It has nothing to do with an EDC website. We've already increased the technology in our building department with our what was once our view permit system. Now we've enhanced that. Many permits are done online and businesses appreciate that. It's a matter of the chief elected official, not the EDC website, the chief elected official taking control of a meeting, assembling the group of resources that the town offers and having that prospective business leave my office saying, wow, we got everything done in a meeting with Mike Frieda. Thank you. Thank you. You have 30 seconds, uh, Carl Kordek. No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, first life and Frieda, 30 seconds, follow up. It's in, you're entitled to it. Well, I can go on for three hours in terms of what we do in terms of businesses, but I'll take another 15 seconds by saying that um, we try to create positive outcomes here. And um, my involvement directly as the chief elected official, because of my business experience, allows me to facilitate things more quickly than those that may not have any business experience in my, in my position. Thank you. This next question will go to, uh, to you, Mike Frieda. Um, and it's on the topic of jobs and uh, the labor force, workforce development uh, in the town, North Haven and the region in particular, to recruit workers from the region to North Haven businesses. Uh, we've heard this at the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce, regional chambers about the labor shortage and difficulty from manufacturing companies, retail, restaurants, to get quality workers to be able to fill those positions. One of the biggest challenges they're facing right now. So as first selectman, uh, how do you aid businesses responding to this challenge and, and create a stable, um, solid workforce uh, to assist local business? Two minutes. Well, there's several things that I've tried to do. And one goes back to my position at Workforce Alliance, working with that board. We have a lot of training. We have a lot of things that we can help prospective uh, job applicant people to, to do. And what we've done is identify sectors. We have tried to facilitate an environment where people go into Workforce Alliance buildings through a Zoom type of uh, social media type calls. And we try to connect them with businesses. You know, I've been part of the Chamber of Job Fairs for quite some time. I've actually walked people through and introduced them at the Chamber events to introduce them to the businesses that I know. And uh, over the past three years, I think I helped three, at least three young men get positions by personally introducing them. What I don't understand, though, is the fact that um, we now are on a slight rebound. Uh, the Department of Labor has said that in August, there were thousands of jobs created in September also. We're now about 69% as a, at a state level in terms of jobs being refilled, jobs being recreated. So we still have a long way to go. My role as first selectman will continue to work, be working with businesses, continue to identify those in need of jobs, 
place them through services at Workforce Alliance and determine the job sectors that they would like to go and where jobs are needed. Thank you. And two minutes for Carl Kordick. I think the main issue, especially at my age, because I'm 31, has been the constant uh, necessity at times to displace this solely on the business when it's also the town. You need to have accessible commuter access. You need to have workforce housing available. Uh, you also need to be able to make your town kind of a destination for everybody to want to live, work, and play. And I think North Haven's done a good job so far, but you need to be able to draw them in to the local businesses. And the only way to do that would be to make North Haven someplace they see themselves growing. Because people can take all the jobs they want. They can commute 45 minutes each way every day. But at the end of the day, you're not retaining them as residents. You're just making commuters. And I think North Haven has a better job to do with bringing in local businesses and providing them with the workforces that assist them as well as grow with them. Thank you. Three seconds for... Mr. Frieda. Well, I think um, some of what Mr. Kordek said is true, but North Haven has been very open under my administration in terms of trying to facilitate people getting jobs. And the bottom line is this, if you're 31 years old or you're 41 years old and you don't have a job, there are thousands of jobs available. So in the end, it's up to the individual to pursue a career to go online, to go on the social media sites. The town can aid in that, but it is the person that has to have the initiative. Thank you. 30 seconds, uh, Mr. Cordy. Oh, no, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> okay, next question goes to uh, Carl Cordick related to uh, building business. And it's a Connecticut question, not just a North Haven question. Uh, we see it uh, often here at the chamber and hear it from our chamber partners and members uh, very frequently about Connecticut's um, national reputation for attracting business and attracting um, jobs to this particular region. And the rankings for the state are not particularly high uh, if you look at, at, at some of them from, from various business uh, entities that rate these things. Um, <clears throat> what would you do to incentivize business uh, and, and how it relates specifically to North Haven, but also to cooperate regionally here in Connecticut uh, to, to bring um, jobs, to bring business right here to this region? Carl Kordek, you get the question uh, for, for two minutes. I think the state has tried desperately to uh, bring in as many businesses as they can and retain them. I think on the state level, you need to be able to build those relationships. And I know North Haven has those relationships with the state level of officials. I think also we need to accentuate our access, which we've done pretty well to I-91 in the Merritt Parkway when it comes to commuters and also businesses coming in. Um, regionally, we're doing good compared to other municipalities. I think we need to uh, continue to focus on expansion, but not so much incremental expansion, but larger expansion to draw people in. So you need like you know, Amazon's great, but what would be better than Amazon? That's what we have to think of. And I think once we set our goals on something bigger and better, we can draw on bigger and better businesses. Thank you. Two minutes for uh, Mr. Frieda. So several things come into play with regards to that question. Uh, number one, as uh, chairman of the Council of Governments here and as last year's past president or last year's president of Connecticut Conference of Municipalities, if we have a business that is looking for a building that is something that North Haven doesn't have. Let's say it's 50,000 square feet. Well, we work collaboratively in the region. I will call some of my chief elected officials because although North Haven in that case, and that example may not be able to host that business, we wanna make sure that that business stays in the region. So I work collaboratively with the chief elected officials from around the area and even at the state level to ensure that we don't lose anything just because it can't come to North Haven. You know, I'm at the point here after 12 years where I can pick up the phone. I have relationships um, at the state level, at the federal level, and of course, uh, at the local level with all of the municipal CEOs. We are working on now, and I just announced it, a new 80,000 square foot retailer at Universal Drive called At Home. There's 225 of these stores across the country and only one in Connecticut. That will go into the old Toys R Us, Baby R Us building. That'll create 300 jobs right there from around the region. So that was a, a good example of in the retail sector, how we're bringing in new businesses to create jobs. 
Now, I will say this in my remaining seconds. We had a national trucking company that wanted to come into North Haven, but one of the town, one of the state regulatory agencies gave the company a hard time. So I talked to the governor, I talked to David Lehman. You can't afford to lose businesses like that in the state through bureaucratic, bureaucratic tendencies at a state level. And the state responded very well to me on that one. So thank you. You have 30 seconds uh, to uh, follow up, Mr. Kordak. I would just simply say the north side of and the south side of Universal Drive definitely need reinvestment. I applaud the at-home investment for them to move into the old Toys R Us. Um, obviously, it's been empty since 2018, so it's good to get that progress there. Um, I think we need more investments to bring in, you know, obviously outside businesses, and I agree the uh, the regional aspect of it definitely needs to be looked on more. Thank you. Mike Pretty, you have 30 seconds. So I'd like to uh, address Mr. Kordick on this issue. Um, and, and Mr. Kordick, I realize, doesn't have the experience uh, in terms of municipal government. But when we look at Northern Washington Avenue, there are four buildings that are, that are being land banked by property owners. They don't want to do anything with those. So the town cannot make an investment, quote unquote, in those buildings. The town cannot use taxpayers' money to invest in developing those buildings. But I can tell you this, I've been relentless with those property owners to move things forward because we can't have three major buildings and there's a fourth plaza there that a property owner who bought three years ago just wants to sit on it and land bank it. There's no town investment that can change that. Only the sheer force of yours truly, my will, to get them and convince them to do so. So thank you. Thank you. Um, this question now goes to you, uh, uh, Mike Frieda, um, and it's on the issue of, of open space and developing uh, open space land. Um, if you can walk us through the open space process, there's a difference between undeveloped land and open space committed land, of course. Universal Drive um, is a popular venue in North Haven. I think we'd all agree in Montaouise, uh, an essential part of attracting jobs, business to the state and also specifically here to North Haven, a busy retail area. Uh, if you look at the remaining open space land, uh, developable land in the town of North Haven, um, uh, what would be your plan uh, for the coming years um, to develop that land? You know, it to respond. So when I look at open space, I look at it in from two different levels. Uh, we have spent almost $2 million in purchasing open space, probably more now. About five years ago, I re-energized and recommissioned the Open Space Committee, which was dormant for years. We established a chairman and we have an open space committee, an active committee. I empowered them to look and come back to me with recommendations on open space. We bought open space between Kings Highway and Hartford Turnpike. We bought open space between Spring Road and Middletown Avenue. We have secured open space to prevent intrusive development in the residential areas. Now the open space from a business standpoint, in terms of developable properties, a good example is 1000 Universal Drive. That right now is open space, but we found someone to buy it. The transaction is now completed and 1000 Universal Drive, which is next to the Nissan Jeep dealership, that will be future development uh, for the town of North Haven. So to summarize, I view open space as two things. Open space in the residential areas of which we have a plan, we have executed the plan, and we bought several properties to ensure that they're open space and recreational areas. Open space regarding business are open spaces that are developable. They may be, may be on State Street, Universal Drive, as I mentioned, and on Washington Avenue. And it's my job to fill those open spaces from a business standpoint, but to preserve open space in the residential areas by continuing to look to purchase properties that allow that open space and prevent intrusive development. Thank you. And Ms. Kornick, you have two minutes on the topic happy, of open space. I'm happy to hear that open spaces are being preserved in residential areas. I also am uh, ecstatic that as long as we have access in the commuter areas, you know, the heavy traffic areas and we have open space, we can benefit from that from a business perspective. Um, I agree with that very much. Um, second to that, I think we should always preserve the open spaces as much as possible, obviously, because the land value alone 
if a developer comes in and, you know, we have property of a value to them, we can make a profit, a pretty good profit at that. So, um, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Open space is good in residential areas, business areas, definitely good to benefit from developing. Thank you. Mike Fridia, 30 seconds to follow up. Right now, I'm continuing to look at what parcels are, are available in residential areas for open space. And uh, the open space, a byproduct of that, you have to have a willing seller. And what we do on open spaces, we're obligated to do two blue book appraisals. We come out with a value and we present the offer to the person considering selling. And that will continue to be an important strategy in this administration, open space in the residential areas. Thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, next uh, 30 seconds, Mr. Kordak. If you choose to add anything. Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Well, on to the next question, and it relates to transportation, and this is addressed to you, uh, Mr. Kordek, um, related to all facets of transportation, highway, automobile, bus lines, uh, commuter lots, trains, uh, you name it. Um, and, of course, the expansion of Tweed, which is a regional airport as well, and that seems imminent uh, nearby. So banking on all those areas, how would you assess North Haven's transportation needs at this moment uh, in time? as part of an economic development plan, and how would you work to improve that related to specifically bus lines uh, and also train and train stations? People could use those um, venues for commuting. You have two minutes. That's a great question. As somebody that's worked with monorails, trains, and boats, and all kinds of different transportation devices in my tourism industry experience, I think North Haven has a great position to attack and be on an offensive stance when it comes to bringing in, you know, competitive businesses that also want to benefit from the commuter access. I think from a bus line perspective, as you mentioned, some of our bus stations, especially the one outside of town hall needs a little cleanup, a little spruce up. Obviously, it's not necessarily the town's problem, but it's also the bus lines problem that they focus on, you know, cleaning it up, tidying it up, because the small things do matter from a personal perspective. Um, Beyond that, I think the train station access has always been a, a debate question <laughs> for the past couple of years. Obviously, with the state funding and other benefits coming in, we have to make sure that we have the, the money basically to put one in. And I think we're getting close to that little by little. And I think that would benefit us greatly, especially in the region, because you have New Haven and you have Hartford. And if we position ourselves geographically between those two, we could be a powerhouse when it comes to commuter access as well as local small businesses. Thank you. Um, first, like when Freddie, you have two minutes. So let me explain what we have done and what we are doing on transportation. Um, we uh, now are back with a train station on board for the town of North Haven. So the state and I worked very closely together down through the years, and the state invested about six million dollars in the design of a train station. First, it was going to go on Divine Street. Then it was moved. We moved it down to Styles at the end of J Roots. During that process, because Pfizer owns the property at the end of Stiles, I was very instrumental in collaborating, bringing Pfizer in, introducing them to the DOT, hosting a meeting in my office, and they made a deal that Pfizer would lease some of the land to the DOT to build that train station. Now we're waiting to see how it can be funded through the state transportation fund. Now, one of the things I've done down through the years, and this is where relationships and experience come into play, that I also was appointed to be co-chairman of the Connecticut State Rail Advisory Committee. As a result of that appointment six years ago, I, I established great relationships with the DOT. John Burnick's a good example, who heads up the train stations. And we can make an argument that if it wasn't for my involvement at that state level as co-chairman of that commission, North Haven would not be considered for a train station right now. We need to work a little bit more closely with the Connecticut Transit District. I'm on the board of directors of that. They have routes that get truncated in certain parts. I'll give you an example. Universal Drive traveling west on Sackett Point Road. We've tried hard to get them to connect that route. I would agree that we need some bus depot improvements. They don't want to invest the money. I'm trying to figure this out, how we can get that done. That's one of my major initiatives in this next term. Thank you. Carl Kordak, you have 30 seconds for a follow-up. I just have one question. How many businesses would benefit from moving it from the, the train station from the previous location to the new location? Thank you. 30 seconds for Mike Frieda. 
Well, uh, Carl, I'm sure is not aware of this. I wouldn't expect him to be aware of it. But the Divine Street location, because Humphrey Chemical was at the end of that, remediation needed to be done there. It would cost more to remediate that site than it would to build the train station. And that's one of the reasons why we moved it one block down, down on Stiles. So the way I see it, that whether it's Divine Street or Stiles, it would have no impact on the businesses at all because businesses that would benefit would benefit in either location. Thank you. So this next question uh, is for you, First Selectman Frieda, and it revolves around uh, technology. And here's a fun fact that uh, our chamber dug up uh, for this uh, presentation. Um, as of last year, 46.4% of North Haven population uses the internet at broadband speeds. And of course, we always are trying to upgrade technology everywhere in our households, uh, but certainly within our businesses too. So as we recover from the pandemic, and there's been a lot more um, online application, including this Zoom presentation uh, here, uh, how would you improve the technology infrastructure as part of North Haven's development? Two minutes. So let me uh, share with you what we've done and what we're planning to do. From an internal governmental standpoint, we have uh, invested tremendously in increasing the technology here. Some examples of that are live meetings now in this conference room next door where our board of selectmen meetings are live and we're streaming live on Facebook. That entailed a tremendous investment in technology in an old building here that was built in 1886 so that we can facilitate that with the public next door here. We've also invested $4 million in a technological upgrade for our internal radio communication systems between police and fire. For the first time ever, we now have connected our board of education with that system that God forbid in the event of a breach in our school system, our police would be able to respond three to four minutes more quickly as a result of that investment I've made. Thirdly, we've built an emergency management center with all kinds of technology across the street. If we were all together in a storm, a major storm, I'd be able to show you on screens, street by street, where there's power lines down, where there's trees down. And that's another investment that I've made. We'll continue to invest in technology. In terms of broadband, uh, we're already working with Comcast. I have a lot of com uh, contacts at Comcast at the higher levels. Through the federal stimulus money, ARPA, it's my goal to utilize some of that money to increase the bandwidth of Comcast throughout our community. I'm also working with Go Net Speed Quick. They are also building fiber optics in Ridge Road because of my relationships with them to increase brand broadband capacity there. I can go on and on about this. I know my time is up. Thank you very much. Challenger, uh, Carl Cordick, this is on the issue of technology. You have two minutes. I think broadband's good. I'm happy to hear that Go Net Speed is being involved in the development of uh, more infrastructure. For a while, some of the residents were complaining that they didn't have access to higher speed. So it's good to be hearing that we're getting those investments. Additionally, I would uh, look into Wi-Fi mesh networks, if possible, on the town green and some other areas throughout the town that necessarily don't necessitate uh, running a physical broadband wire or router. Um, beyond that, I think we're doing good as a town for broadband and infrastructure investment. I agree wholeheartedly the police should always have the access and the school should always have the access to infrastructure that helps them and evolves them uh, beyond just technology, as well as you know broadband and everything else that's going on. Um, I'm glad to also hear that the radio issues in the high school have been fixed with the response times. Uh, other than that, I have no complaints. I know some residents had some complaints about Comcast, but obviously that's a one-on-one -on -one case with the resident themselves and the service provider. Thank you. You have 30 seconds, Mike Freda, to follow up. I just wanted to add one thing in terms of what we've done. We've made a significant investment and many of North Haven's residents, I'm sure, received messages from me during storms, tornadoes and hurricanes. Uh, we have uh, upgraded that technology. We have a broader reach of residential impact in terms of getting my messages. And what I always try to do is keep the residents informed during those difficult storms, blizzards, tornadoes and hurricanes, so thank you. And 30 seconds, Carl Kordek, to follow up to. Time to follow up. Okay, great. We are moving on to the next question. And it is to you, Challenger Carl Kordek. 
uh, about consumers, uh, getting customers uh, to come to North Haven to patronize North Haven businesses, uh, attracting uh, not only those new businesses uh, to the area, but getting people to drive here, to come here from out of area towns, as well as those residents within the town of North Haven. So, uh, Mr. Kordak, how do you plan to use your position if you are elected for selectman, mark and attract North Haven to people outside of the town? You have two minutes. I think uh, from an attraction standpoint, I think Universal Drive is definitely the crown jewel of North Haven right now. As I mentioned uh, previously before, I think the north side of Washington Ave could definitely benefit from some investment. Obviously, there's a lot of steps and process to, to that, um, but we have the capability to have the north side as well as the south side of North Haven attracting visitors. Universal Drive is one of those good locations because as uh, the first segment will tell you, having Toritos there now, the Mexican restaurant will definitely drive some interest in the, uh, the, the south end of Universal Drive, not so much Target or anything else. It would be that first fresh restaurant that people always want. I think you have to definitely bring unique destinations to town, unique restaurants, unique shopping. Um, from my tourism aspect, from my own personal experience, I think we definitely need to spruce up our, uh, our image when it comes to certain aspects of attracting, you know, visitors, not necessarily from out of the region or from out of the town, but also from out of the state. I think we have a great possibility here regionally with our, as I mentioned before, the Merritt Parkway and I-91 to bring in new investment and new visitors to our town. Thank you. And two minutes uh, for Mr. Frieda. So Mr. Kordick mentioned Toritos, and that's a good example. And I want to share with you what I've done in terms of being North Haven's chief elected cheerleader when it comes to promoting new businesses. So Toritos was a project that I was directly involved with, with the CEO of National Realty, Jack Baker. We wanted to bring a Mexican restaurant in. We delivered a Mexican restaurant. But in anticipation of it, uh, through the utilization of social media, I was getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages uh, with great anticipation when it was coming in. I was promoting it on social media. Once it opened and I went down to Toritos, they were hugging me. They were so happy because they were following along North Haven's chief elected official promoting that business. Last Friday, they had a two hour wait to get in there. The owner thanked me personally for promoting his business through social media. And many of his customers said, Mr. Frieda, let us know and was keeping us posted about this. Now, I've done the same thing with other businesses in town in promoting them through my social media contacts and through the social media platform. Amazon recently said to me that they thought that I was one of the few chief elected officials that um, supported them overtly with the public. And the job creation there, I think, speaks for itself. So I look at part of my role as not only the chief elected official, strategically, operationally, financial management wise, overseeing the legal aspect of this government, but also being a cheerleader, promoting the town in a positive fashion. And I'll continue to do so. Thank you. 30 seconds, uh, Carl Kordak, to follow up. I would definitely agree with that. Toritos is definitely worth the wait. <laughs> Thank you. Mike Frieda, anything to add? Well, we're working on um, many new businesses in town. I have a hotel being built there and I'm a big cheerleader for that. Uh, I recently announced a new Panera Bread standalone restaurant is going next to the Chick-fil-A. And Peter Ferrara at Ferrara's is a good example. He's thanked me many times for promoting and uh, being a cheerleader for Ferrara's market, which has been an unprecedented success down in Universal Drive. So thank you. Thank you. I had lunch at uh, Torito's yesterday. Spinach quesadilla, if you both must know. Uh, thank you. This next question is about manufacturing, of which we have much in uh, North Haven. About 2,000 people plus are employed just in, within the town of North Haven in the manufacturing industry, one of the largest aspects of the North Haven economy. Um, but they have their specific issues, obviously, with the pandemic, supply chain issues being a major problem right now. And also the um, inability to fill some of their open positions in manufacturing. Uh, as your position as first selectman, uh, uh, Mike Frieda, how do you mitigate stress and how do you cooperate from your office to work with the manufacturing entities uh, in the town of North Haven? You have two minutes. Uh, so two things I'll mention. 
Uh, number one, uh, we've worked closely with Jameson Scott, who's the president of the New Haven Manufacturers Association. We've introduced him, uh, we've connected him with our school system because we think there's an opportunity to have our high school students understand and realize that there's other trades out there that could be beneficial to them. So we've tried to work that way in terms of connecting uh, the Manufacturers Association with the school system. I've been with the New Haven Manufacturers Association down at Medtronics, speaking with Medtronics, one of our top four grand list members. But also I take, try to take a step further. We take a look at North Haven and let's look at Praxair Industries as an example. We'll have a very good relationship with them. They're one of our top 10 grand list members. So we work closely with them to bring in a division of their company, the Lindy Gasification System. That came in from another part of Connecticut and that we look to consolidate those two divisions here in North Haven and they are now on Washington Avenue. So it's a twofold strategy, creating a more heightened level of awareness with our high school students and in many cases, our college students in terms of the manufacturing jobs that are there and how good those jobs can be. But it's also working with our manufacturers here to see how we can expand with them. And I'm working on a major project now at Death Row Park with Chris Ulbrich that, will, that may end up seeing North Haven receive a, another business in town that's an expansion of an existing manufacturing facility in this region. Thank you. Mr. Cornick, you have two minutes. The first thing I would do is probably most importantly make North Haven competitive for these businesses to uh, not only attract residents and also younger students that obviously Mr. Frieda mentioned the high school students with, you know, apprentice programs and different fellowship programs that they have. Um, to remain competitive in North Haven, I think we do need investment, like Mr. Frieda mentioned. You do need continual access and uh, ability for people to get to the jobs, enjoy the jobs, have fun outside of the jobs. Because if somebody works in a manufacturing building and they're doing, you know, a 16 hour shift or eight hour shift, depending on the job, you have to factor in what are they going to do afterwards? What are they going to love in town that makes them stay in town and want to work for the company? Because obviously companies move town to town and transfer people, but I think you have to remain competitive in North Haven by bringing in people that love the job outside of the job as well. And I think that's the main way of attracting it because you can give people all the money in the world to do the job. If they don't love the job or love the town, they're not going to stay. Well, thank you. You have 30 seconds, uh, Mike Frieda, for a follow-up if you wish. So from a competitive standpoint, one of the most important things we can do to be competitive is maintain a favorable mill rate. And that businesses look at as uh, being a core of competitiveness. They don't want a wide range of tax increases every year. And we look at North Haven from a competitive standpoint, our mill rate is 20 mills less than some surrounding municipalities. And that's a significant amount of dollars that they save in taxes. And lastly, you take Amazon, in front of Amazon, on the side of Amazon, and on Washington Avenue. We're in the process of building apartments with mixed use that'll help retain people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 30 seconds, Carl Kordak, if you choose to use your time. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right, this is our final question this morning uh, before we have our closing statements. Um, and this is not just about the past, the present, but the future of North Haven in, in a meaningful way, and that is uh, attracting young people uh, to the community. Uh, in, according to numbers that were um, reviewed related to the year 2019, I'm sure they didn't change much in 2020, North Haven's median age was uh, quite higher than some of the area towns in some respects, so an older demographic within the community. So attracting young people to North Haven may be a vital um, way to maintain um, an economic balance and, and balance the demographic age of the town to attract new families, uh, singles as well into the community. And this question goes to Carl Kordek first. What would you do if elected for selectman to ensure that uh, more young people come to North Haven and stay in the community? You have two minutes. Well, first off, there's many things to do. Um, obviously you need representation in local government, either on the board of selectmen or any other department that, you know, board or commission that can benefit from having that youth, youthful experience and know what people really want in town. I think from my own experience living in North Haven at, at an early age was seeing that there was not much to do in town. There wasn't any nighttime entertainment. There wasn't any outdoor activity really besides parks and recreation. Um, and obviously the only game in town is still, is still one of the best places to go for go-karting. But obviously you need 
something to draw people in, hold on to them and show them that this is a good town to grow into. A lot of people want to move here. And I think we have to make it more affordable in some aspects with the housing of apartments and the housing prices themselves. Obviously, we want the housing prices high, but we have to be able to show people that it's attainable to move here. And I think lately, over the past couple of years, we've had more seniors than younger people staying in town. And to retain that, you need to make North Haven a destination, both you know for entertainment, for shopping, for dining, but you have to be able to target them specifically to show them that they can grow here and thrive here beyond what we currently have. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Frieder, you have two minutes. I think it's a multifaceted approach. Um, we are now getting new families moving in, and I know that because new families are calling me, telling me that they moved into certain areas of North Haven. And uh, they're moving in because of our investment in education. Uh, we're spending more per student now uh, than we have in many, many years. We built a new middle school, and what we find is education, by supporting education, brings in new families. And having a mill rate that's 20 mills less than a surrounding municipality also helps with that. That's one facet. Facet number two involves trying to bring in businesses that attract younger people. I'm hoping that this new business will be opening up uh, next month at the Golf Cove. Uh, it's, a, it's a virtual golf facility. I hope that's a good example of trying to bring more people in. I mentioned we're building apartments with mixed use on Washington Avenue. I see that as a vehicle to attract new people, younger people here in North Haven who may not want to buy a home, who may want to live in an apartment, may not want the maintenance of a home, who may like the concept that we've brought forward uh, with uh, the Vigliotti family, who is the developer, and having retail on the first floor of an apartment building. Uh, we're trying to determine how we can connect more with Quinnipiac's law school and medical school and try to create some synergies with their students and local businesses through the Q card. So there's no doubt that it's a challenge. Our median age is about 46.9 years age, 47 years of age. So we will uh, work hard to continue to try to bring new families here. And that's how I see the strategy, multifaceted. Thank you. 30 seconds to follow up if you choose, Carl Kordek. All I can say is what we do today impacts tomorrow. I think we start from, a, you know, attracting younger residents and holding on to them because once they leave for college or once they leave for trade school, they never come back most instances. I think we're at like 52% right now where they either come back or they don't. So we definitely need to find methods to attract them and hold on to them because they are the future. Thank you. Mike Freedy, you have uh, 30 seconds if you wish to use the time. Well, I'm very close with Southern Connecticut State University. Having graduated from there, I speak there. I'm a featured speaker there. I have been along with the other colleges I speak at. And uh, one of the things that that school is that they retain 75, 85% of their students that remain in the area, whether it's North Haven or surrounding areas. So I think that college can be a good vehicle for us to try to continue to perpetuate younger people moving into North Haven and our region. Thank you. So this concludes our question and answer session uh, for our candidates forum uh, here today. Uh, what we'd like to do now is uh, based on the order uh, that we began our program uh, earlier, have our two minute closing statements from both of the candidates. And uh, we start with uh, first selectman, Michael Frieda, we'll have two minutes, Mr. Frieda. Well, thank you, Ray. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I thank Mr. Kordick for joining us uh, during this discussion and this candidates forum. Over the past 12 years, ladies and gentlemen, it's been my great pleasure to serve the great community of North Haven. I can tell you that uh, coming from a corporate business career and being CEO of what was at one time a billion dollar company. And at that time, I also had another job as regional president of the national agency. I was in the consumer products industry. I can share with you that no matter what I did in the past, mergers, acquisitions, featured speaker, corporate boards, this job is more complicated than that was. So the job of a first selectman requires tremendous financial knowledge, operational experience, strategic management, economic development, and operational experience in dealing with unions and union contracts. I think we've done a great job with that, but I'm the type of individual that's never satisfied. We're gonna be continuing to move forward here in North Haven. New businesses will continue to come in, 
I have about 20 major projects I'm working on right now. I anticipate in the next 18 months, 16 of them will be delivered here. We will continue to grow the grant list. We will continue to reinvest in services. I'm proud to announce, and you're hearing it for the first time, that you know we've been AAA rated financially, the gold star of municipalities. I went through a very arduous ratings call with the rating agencies last week. This is where you really have to be on your game and know what you're doing. And I'm happy to report that we've been re-rated AAA. In the next two years, I'll be focusing in on increasing uh, resources in our parks, improving our ball fields, improving our sports facilities, continuing to support education, increasing public safety, adding police officers, fire department, increasing the fire department resources, and we will continue to be a leader in this region. And I'm very grateful for being North Haven's first selection, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Frieda. Uh, Mr. Kordek, your two minute closing statement. Over the past year, we have truly been through a dark night of the soul. The COVID-19 pandemic brought the world to its knees and we mourn the normalcy of a pre-pandemic life. We carry the scars of a virus unlike anything we've seen in this generation. Psychologically, we are battered and bruised, but we're not defeated. It's time to rise from that dust. Here in North Haven, we have an opportunity, not just to start anew, but to rebuild. We have a chance to build back better. Never before have we had such a blank slate to forge a new future. I'm excited. And as your next first selectman, I'm determined to help guide our wonderful town to new heights, taking the lessons we've learned with us along the way. As a leader, I'm prepared for the challenges ahead, the relationships being built and the town being financially prepared for the next decade. We're all in this together, one united team sharing our successes with the generation before us and after us. We have the capability to transform into something new and inspirational as a town. Our drive will continue to push us farther than we've ever gone before, and I embrace the demands that come with it. What we do this November 2nd is the most important tax, task before us. North Haven is at a big moment in our town's history. This local election will decide which direction our town goes into the future. Post-pandemic, North Haven can rise to new heights as we have never seen before and become the sort of place that uplifts everyone, everyone to their full potential. Thank you. Thank you. And we'd like to thank our two candidates for participating in the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce uh, election forum this morning to Democratic First Selectman Challenger, Carl Kordek. Thank you for being with us here uh, for this forum. And to incumbent Republican First Selectman, Michael Frieda, thank you again for participating. Uh, and again, our uh, wish for you to cast your vote. November 2nd is election day here in 2021. We'd like to also thank uh, Katie Ambrosio, who is our public policy and strategic communications specialist. Uh, she's been sharing the screen with us and doing a beautiful and diligent job um, with our government affairs committee, uh, but also uh, today holding up those time cards, keeping us uh, on track. So Katie, thank you so much uh, for a professional job uh, as usual. And uh, again, this will be broadcast on North Haven television, NHTV. On behalf of all of our partners and everyone affiliated with our uh, affiliate chamber, the Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce, and right here at the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, I'm Executive Director Ray Andrews, and thank you very much for watching.